actually guys there is still one last hope um, I have to make an important phone call right now to someone who might be able to help wish me luck on my squad here we go hey guys welcome to my daily vlogs please subscribe What's up, Mabu High Squad? How are you doing? Did you sleep well? Welcome to another vlog here at the Mabu High Squad farmhouse. Yes, guys, my mom just arrived from the airport because, get this, after 10 days, finally, her luggage arrived. So, in case you're just joining us, my parents are here from Canada. We're here in the Philippines, and the airline totally lost the luggage. There was a huge mix-up, and anyways, long story short, like 10 or 11 days later, half of their luggage has arrived. So, was it hard to get your luggage? Oh yeah, I was going back and forth. The other one, it went to Hong Kong. What? To Japan. The other one went to Korea. I. And two more is missing. I. I have to go back again tomorrow and see or wait for them to notify me if it will arrive. Okay guys, so we still have like luggage that is missing. But anyways, glad that two pieces are here. And glad that my mom and dad are here. No wonder! Guys, I just caught... My dad has been feeding Sahara. And that's why she's so... Look at how big she is. Like, every... She's getting bigger. That you don't feed. Tendon, just a tendon. Tendon. And she's smart. She will continually beg from you. OMG. I... Guys, look at what my mom got from Canada. Ice wine. Ooh. And brandy. It's an ice wine and a brandy. Is this made in Niagara Falls? Okay, it's product of Canada. Mississauga. So guys, it's a Canadian owned ice wine guys ice wine is it's like sweet and the way it's created is it's hand-picked by hand the grapes um during the winter because apparently when like the grapes freeze something about the sugar concentration goes up and so those like frozen grapes end up becoming ice wine they turn it into wine and like the taste is extra sweet it's often served as a dessert wine and Canada is a producer of ice wine. Yes. Woo. We can bust this out on a special occasion. So guys, if you saw the last vlog, we talked about what happened yesterday where our dog Brittany totally attacked our smaller dog. And our smaller dog, I thought he had died, but he didn't. It was just, luckily, no broken bones, but he had a huge hole in his face here. He got stitches and now he's like healing with like antibiotics and stuff. It was really scary. Mommy, you were there, right? Oh god, I was I was in shock. Me too. I can't believe it. So I, I, it reminds me of um coyote in Toronto. Coyotes. Coyotes, like yeah. Coyotes. It was really scary. Oh. Our our dog turned into like a wild vicious animal. These two dogs, I mean it's dog quarrels, car. yeah, dog quarrels happen though. Like it's you know, when we had our dogs in Toronto, they would always fight, but this was different. Like she our dog Brittany really tried to kill our other dog Cypher. So if you haven't seen that vlog, watch the last vlog. We're not punishing Brittany. It's just now that we know that she's capable of like totally snapping sometimes. In the end, we've decided to rehome her and have her stay with the breeder where we got her from. It was she was actually given to us um, as a gift, and we adopted her. It's just really, really sad because RJ and I and Pate we sure he really love very Brittany. Happy there. He will be very happy because it is with her own life. Yeah. We've considered other ways to try to keep her here, but right now we feel like the best is to rehome her in a large open space where she can live with other Sholos of her kind. It's just really sad. We, I wish we could keep her here, like we all do, but she's a big risk now. Like. Our dogs, any dogs that our visitors bring, kids that are here, it's just really, really sad. And it's not right to just put them in the cage. Yeah, we could. Uh, one of the things that RJ brought up is why don't we build her an enclosure here? 
and she could just live there and stay there for her whole life. But that's also not right. Yeah, she needs to be free. But I mean, in the zoo where she'll be moving, it's also an enclosure, a, a big enclosure. But at least she'll be with other dogs. That's the difference. If he is still here, it's not good for the dog to hear. Stop it! <laughs> yeah. Stop it! No! She does have a lot more restrictions here. Like, he won't she, be happy. She, He's not free. She, I mean, she'll chew random decor in our home. And so we bought a bunch of toys, which led to the fight in the first place. Um, that she could chew, but yeah, you're right. Like out there, she'll have less restrictions. She can be more of herself out there. Coyote is like that. It was terrifying, I know. But Brittany's never like that. Like that's the very first time I've ever seen her be like that. It's like, well, that's his nature, you know. Once the dog is is, his, is like that, it's gonna be, it's gonna show off. Guys, at the LC, our helper is crying because she heard me just say that we're bringing Brittany back and she's definitely a favorite of ours. Actually guys, there is still one last hope. Um, I have to make an important phone call right now to someone who might be able to help. Wish me luck, Mumble High Squad. Dog Coach Francis, hi, how are you? Better than I deserve, as uh, David Ramsey would say. <laughs> awesome. So Mabu High Squad, this here is Dog Coach Francis. He's a dog behavior professional and host of the Dog Behind the Human podcast. You should check out his stuff for anything dogs and dog training. It's really great stuff. Um, and if there's someone who could help us with our situation with Brittany, it would be him. Coach Francis, thank you for meeting with me so late and so like on last minute. My pleasure. I, I I love what you do, Mikey. I'm a big fan of yours. So thank you, thank you. I'm ready to help. What happened was, I have a, a few dogs. One of the dogs is uh, it's called a Sholo Eats Squintly. Do you know, like they're called Mexican hairless dogs. Yes. 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 You know, a little bit you know hard them. to pronounce. <laughs> yeah, Sholo Eats. Great Squintly. dogs. So um, she just turned one yesterday. And we were supposed to have a big party for her, but a huge crisis that happened. So she ended up attacking my smaller dog, my mm -hmm. uh, small Chihuahua slash Bichon Frise slash Yorkie, really tiny. Okay. And it was like a death grip on the neck. So she, totally, they were, I looked in the CCTV and they fought over a toy. And like, okay. my, my smaller dog went to sniff a toy and I guess she felt like territorial over it. And she went for the kill. Luckily, I was right there. I separated them, but it was hard to. She, it was like a death lock, coach. So the dog was in shock. We brought him to the vet. Thankfully, he just needed stitches and mm -hmm. no bones broken. He's on like meds now and he's kind of getting back to normal. But now I'm, I'm sad and everyone here in my household is sad because we're faced with the problem of like, we might have to rehome her because I'm scared that she'll do this again. I don't know with one of my other, I also have another smaller dog and mm -hmm. a standard poodle. I don't think the standard poodle is in that much of a danger, more of our smaller dogs. And then also we have friends who bring their small dogs to our place all the time. Um, and then plus I've got family coming over and they have toddlers. So I'm just scared now that I've seen this side of her. Her name is Brittany that she'll mm -hmm. just like kind of unpredictably, I suppose. Is there hope coach Francis to find a way to possibly keep her? I was thinking to just keep her in the, our staff house. Cause we have a staff house and I mean, she's kind of used to living there and just not let her near our home with our other dogs and with our guests. But then I'm also afraid she'll get out into the yard and maybe I have friends over who are swimming in the pool and their kids might get attacked. Anyways, what is your take on this? Is she like savable? Cause our other option was to bring her back to the breeder where she would live in this outdoor enclosure with other Sholo Eats Squintleys. Okay, how young are all of your dogs, including- Okay, your... so all our dogs are below two years old. They're generally, they're adults, but they're young. Um, and okay. 
as well. I mean, she just turned one. Um, Brittany just turned one. Yeah, as in yesterday when it happened. Okay, so that's still pretty young, and most of them are females. Brittany is a female. We have one other smaller female, which is Sahara, but the one she attacked is a male, a young male. My poodle is a is a male as well. Has this happened before? Like they fought over something? Um, like yeah, I mean, aside from the toy. Yeah, the dogs have squabbled before over toys, um, food. Sometimes they play rough, and then it'll escalate to like an actual fight. And we usually like separate them. Like we throw a pillow in between them, or you know, we kind of just get in between them, and it kind of just dies down after a bit. That has happened, and Brittany actually is often involved in these fights out of all my dogs. Um, it, it was a shock to see it escalate to this level where it seemed like she was going to kill my small dog. All right. I understand it can be very concerning, especially with dog fights, but the escalation was probably predictable. Okay. So you probably have seen this behavior before by the time Brittany was around six months going up. Possibly, yes. Most pet parents would think that if their dog is like six months, oh, don't worry, they'll outgrow it. And then hopefully they get along well and uh, things will be better. But the thing about dogs is it doesn't really get better. They really need some kind of intervention. Is this trainable? Is this something that is trainable? Yes. Okay. I just find it really odd. Usually it's male to male or female to female. What happened was uh, Brittany probably has some really strong protective instinct or uh, resource guarding, as we would call it, okay? Uh, it it's going to be too soon to put like a final judgment or we're just going to re rehome you and then we're just going to bring you back to your breeder. Um, I would probably dig in a little bit with the breeder and, and ask, has there ever been a time wherein one of their dogs behaved this way? Is the mom or the biological mom or the biological dad showing similar symptoms or similar behavior because mm -hmm. sometimes it is something that is genetic uh, it's ah, not even your fault it's okay? inherited so some of the behaviors can be inherited so a lot of pet parents would probably put a blame oh my god it's a problem with the dog or maybe is it because of us but yeah um, i've been feeling guilt i feel like it's my fault and i just don't know what i did wrong it could be genetic, and then that's why choosing the right breeder is mm -hmm. very important. And then it's the task of the breeder to make sure that the dogs that they produce in their kennel is even tempered. I, but but again, uh, I, I would probably give the benefit of the doubt to the breeder. All right. I mean, especially for Mexican hairless dogs, uh, they're quite rare. So I wouldn't yeah. even assume that they're overbred because again, they're rare. But again, benefit of the doubt that the dog is well-bred. Okay, so let's just put it out there. It could be genetic, okay? So that's mm -hmm. why we need to dig in a little bit. Then that the dynamics then shift into what have you done? What have we done in trying to raise this pup? Um, you have small dogs, you have a standard poodle, they have the space to run. But again, how much dogs or how many dogs did they grow up with? I see. Have they grown up with other trained, other sociable animals? Are the friends or the, the dogs that's surrounding them also sociable? She was the only puppy in her litter. And I understand that she was separated and kind of raised alone. And then she came to us. There you go. So uh -huh. she never really learned how to play nice in such a young age. The critical socialization period for dogs is as soon as they're born, if they have litter mates, they will try to feel their way into their mom's milk and then trying to fight for that space, oh. rubbing skin to skin, trying to look for milk. Uh, of course, the bigger dogs or the bigger pups usually would get have, well, you will usually have an advantage. I see. Um, that's why we have those runts because you, they usually are just tiny ones or smaller ones that can't get enough resource from the mom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if if she was on the only pup, so she never really developed the social skills on how to bite, how to interact, I when see. to yelp, 
Okay. That's it. Um, so it's like the play dynamics of the litter was not there. And then she was probably rehomed to you by around eight weeks or two months. Was Something she? like that. Yeah. She was really. All right. At two months to four months, this is now the critical socialization window wherein the dog should probably experience being exposed to like a camera, different temperatures like AC, non AC, humidity. Yes, yes. Different sights, sounds. Yeah, we try. Um, we try to expose her to a lot. And you probably, she's probably okay with those experience, with those stressors. However, mm -hmm. interacting with other dogs of different sizes, smaller than her, bigger than her, and then how to play nice, how when to give a correction, what's the consequence that if, if I bite this dog, they have this potential to hurt me back. So I would probably not bite as hard. So those are some of the dynamics that I think is usually what's missing when it comes to raising dogs. Well, if you don't have those answers, they're, you're putting in those risk of a dog growing up to be a bully. I see. So remember when we were kids, we would play with other kids and then we would learn, oh, you know what? I should not cheat because they don't want to play with me anymore. And that's what's missing with most dogs. And that's why, because they're now in a social void that they're just learning everything on their own. They're thinking, oh, you should not touch my, my toy because, well, again, that's all they know. They just figured it out on, on their own. They never had that correction coming from another dog. They never learned how to play nice. And then as they reach six months, those socialization windows start to close. And then um, a new chapter opens. They now go into the fear mode or fear impact period, meaning anything that they do not understand, they will start to fear. And then sometimes uh, those genetics that is innate to the dog will, will start kicking in. I or see. these natural traits are coming out. And that's why uh, for a Mexican hairless dog or any dog at that, at six months, you now get to see the genetics coming out. Anything mm -hmm. that they are fearful of, they would remember that. That's why socialization in an early age is very important. And for small dogs, they have to grow up faster, develop those instincts faster in order for them to survive. So that's what's going on, I think. And then is it solvable? Yes. Through socialization uh, exposure, um, okay. at least in so our So it's not ambo. too late. No, no. I think we just need to find the right dogs that can teach her how to be a normal dog. Right now, Brittany's not behaving like a normal dog. She's yeah. probably behaving like a, a diva version of Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I totally understand what you're saying. She needs like good mentor dogs around her we have a program called the boarding school program now depending on the need of the dog we don't really put in like a set of questions that the dog needs to answer what we want is to focus on the foundation of a dog to be less stressed and how do we do that we let them play day in and day out we encourage them to play we try to find a good match it's a matter of trying to find your fit trying to find that first friend in school that that's usually our formula i'm not really sure with mm -hmm. other yeah, dog yeah. training programs but uh, we want the dog to just learn to play learn to play nice and then we teach the basic obedience so we can communicate with the dog is it like a month or a few weeks how, how long generally our standard program is uh on average lasts for five weeks uh, mm -hmm. a little bit a little bit over a month, uh, we have to go through the first week of detox. Muna. They would mm -hmm. be afraid. They would have yeah. to try to navigate their way, learn about the schedule yeah. uh, for our great uh, handlers, for my team who's just doing a wonderful job. We need to show confidence that, hey, you know what? Those uh, diva attitude is not welcome here and we're not afraid. Of course, we, we need to be afraid. If not, we, we don't want to get too cocky that but we're going to get bit, right? Mm. But we don't. We want to show them that, uh, well, we do not appreciate that. And we just need to be to remain calm and then just show them, oh, this is where you're going to go. This is feeding time. Oh, you're, you're trying to bite me. Well, I'm not afraid of you. But if you start biting me, then I'm not going to be able to give you your food. So 
We are trying to find a way to lessen their stress without flooding them too much. Flooding is a psychological term wherein you're bombarding that dog or person with too much information that they're shutting down. That's why we don't want that. We want them to realize the consequences, right? Mm -hmm. But for dogs, they have evolved for 18,000 years together with humans. They have those prefrontal cortex, the same thing with humans. They think. Uh, not like adults, but they have an IQ of like close to a two-year-old because it's a process. It's a, we're talking about the brain chemicals and then how the brain uh, makes new memories and makes associations. Yeah, so got that's it. That's a science, the boring part of it. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, you guys are pros at this and I love that you guys understand the science. So in all, after all that's been said here, we still can't say whether or not Brittany might possibly be able to stay with us and be safely housed here. My, my Again, my fear is just that she'll attack out of the blue. I guess it's too early to say, right? Until you've actually seen her. Yes, it is too early. We don't want to pass judgment just because of one right. incident. That would probably be, okay, that's extreme. That's probably the eye opener that, okay, that happened. Yeah. Uh, but we have to give a chance to Brittany. Maybe she just, she was just scared. She probably didn't know how to act. Um, some dogs don't know how to give the proper corrections. Um, again, if she never learned how to play nice in the first place, maybe we can teach her how to play nice. Three things that we need to understand in terms of dog training, okay? Number one is management. It starts with management. So I would probably avoid um, toys anywhere and then just make sure it's all tidy and it's kept. No toys lying on the ground because they're oh, like kids. Okay. Yeah. So if you have toys lying around, then you're just Everywhere. giving an opportunity. Uh, uh, okay. That's mismanagement already. You're giving them, them. I thought that's what you had to do to give them, you know, stuff to do. <laughs> no, that's because you're know. giving them that opportunity to, to fight over something. Yeah, right. Number two, you want to teach them manners, teach them what gets you that toy. That's why we teach them basic obedience. All right. And number three, we reward good behaviors. Mm. All right. We only reward good behaviors. All the other bad stuff. Well, it's either we take the toy away because you're fighting over it, then no more toy. Um, if everybody's behaved, everybody gets a treat. No favoritism. If I only have one piece of treat, or maybe like I have a special bone, I'm going to take that dog out, put them inside the kennel or a crate, and then you can enjoy that toy inside your kennel alone. We don't want them fighting over because by the end of the day, they're like kids. They would fight over stuff. Yeah, that, well, that's good to know. Coach, thank you so much for your advice. Now that I know all of this, I think the next course of action before going ahead and rehoming her because honestly, m today my helper was in tears learning that she's oh. and I'm sad and my partner RJ is depressed and we're all really sad, but this is kind of a glimmer of hope. First, I will talk to Mario, her breeder, and then I will also possibly send Brittany over to you guys to board and undergo your program and see what, what happens from there. Right. So I understand the frustration. It's too early. It's one bad incident. Dogs do fight. Altercations do happen, but it's sometimes predictable if you just keep an open eye, like just really watch out for those little behaviors. It, it was bound to happen if Brittany has been already resource guarding and then you have toys around and it's yeah. just a perfect storm that happened. And I'm sorry you have to go through that. But again, there is hope. Yeah. And with the proper management, with especially with multiple dog household, there's always uh, a solution to that. So thank you so much, uh, dog coach Francis. That was so helpful. We'll be in touch. All right, guys, that was such an enlightening chat. So mommy, okay, and RJ, I, I spoke with coach Francis. He's one of the top dog trainers here in the Philippines. And he said that Brittany is still trainable and that she was like the only puppy in her litter. 
And so, like, that could have been one of the reasons she didn't learn, like, certain social manners. Also, um, it could be genetics. It could be the parents that are, you know, territorial over resources, so it passed down onto her. He says it's too early to tell if she's, like, salvageable and if it's a good idea to keep her here or possibly have us rehome her. But um, they have a program where she can stay at their training facility and work with professionals for five weeks. And then by then, he'll be able to for sure tell us, like probably even before that, whether, you know, she's like trainable, I guess, whether that can be trained out of her, that crazy aggression that we saw yesterday. Wow, that was really mind blowing. Thing that make him do that. No yeah. other trainer can, can change that. Well, yeah, that's what, that's what he said. He okay. said possibly it's like part of her instinct and yeah. he'll be able to tell when he's working with her if it's, if it's able to come out or not. Guys, my mom wanted to walk these two dogs around the outside of the house. Yeah, they're gonna pee and poo now. This is that time. There goes Rizal walking around. Uh, I love the, I love the landscaping at night. It looks really nice. I mean, it looks nice during the day, but Sahara has quickly become the favorite of both my dad and my mom. In fact, last night my mom asked if Sahara could sleep with them. <gasps> go poo, Rizal. Go poo. Holy! Look how fast he runs, guys. He's like a deer. Go, Sahara. It's good that she's running because she's getting a little chunky. Ever since my mom and dad came. I caught them feeding her little like table scraps and guys like it's starting to show it's adding all up She's gained a little weight Mabuhai squad good morning just got back from my walk and totally collecting all the toys as uh, Coach Francis said we shouldn't leave toys around and you know that's so strange because I've always thought that that's standard to leave toys around I mean, that's what I did growing up, and our, our dogs never really fought at all. But I mean, every dog is different, which means every combination of dogs will be different. I, was, I guess I was lucky growing up with my three dogs. They never really fought over toys. But um, so many factors, as we learned from speaking with Coach Francis, and there's genetics. Oh, speaking of genetics, I spoke with Mario, the breeder of Brittany, and... Um, he says that no, aggression um, of any kind really, resource guarding, all of that, doesn't see that in the parents and in fact all of the dogs, uh, all the Sholo dogs that he owns. So it's uh, likely not genetics, which means this is a behavioral problem and hopefully it can be corrected. Um, so I've been thinking about it and um, been reading your comments and I do feel like we should give Brittany another chance. However, I don't think I will ever mix her with the other dogs. Maybe Rizal, but not the small ones. I don't want to risk that. Um, she'll also have to be put away anytime we have guests over. And I mean, this is the safest way. Anytime there are kids, anytime our guests bring their small dogs, she will have to be put away. Rizal also will be put away. And yeah, we're gonna put Brittany through the five week uh, program, the boot camp. Um, we're also going to enroll Rizal um, a couple weeks after, so he can also undergo it. In terms of the small dogs, our small dogs will, I know them, they will not bite. They won't bite our guests, they won't bite other dogs. Um, but even so, if there's anyone strange or new, we will put our small dogs away. The, the good thing about this entire tragedy that happened is it's going to really teach RJ and I how to deal with guests coming over, how to manage, but like what Francis said, manage the dogs. You, we can't just allow them to play together. Like the, We really need to be actively managing uh, their interactions. And I, I want it, to, like I said in the last vlog, it need, we need to be safe here. I, I don't want another tragedy to happen because we, you know, we weren't, we weren't prepared or we weren't managing the dogs. This also has taught me that anytime we get a new dog, we're gonna put them through the five-week boot camp. As per our new plan, if 
uh, Coach Francis still says by the end of the five weeks that, hey, Mikey, um, Brittany still is displaying that behavior of um, resource guarding and she's attacking other dogs over toys and food, then um, sadly she will just have to leave. I mean, there's that's the best option um, in my mind. Um, and again, like we can always visit her at Mariel's place. Mariel has been super kind enough and gracious to uh, take her back. I know she's in good hands there at um, Mario's facility. So yeah, we'll just have to see, guys. Let's continue the day and accept the new adventure that this new day holds. Here at the Mabuhai Squad farmhouse, the birds are noisy. Good morning. Morning, birds. How you doing? Guys, these two abandoned breakfast. Good morning, Gabriella. Good morning, Ruby. Good morning, Marcelo. So birds are noisiest, well mine anyway, they're noisiest in the mornings and in the evenings, like sun, sunrise and sunset is when they're the noisiest. They're like roosters, um, but they will squawk and screech throughout the day. I actually like the sound of it, but like if we were living in a, an apartment, like our old condo, man, our neighbors would definitely hear them. Feast, my dragons, feast. There's Clara. No tail feather, Clara. Oh, so sad. There are the Conyers. <laughs> and there's Marcelo singing his morning song. Gabriella. Oh, here come. Oh my gosh. For some reason, the Conyers love landing on my head. You guys look beautiful. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous. Wow. That's Gabriella's song. <laughs> oh my gosh. You don't want to train them to not make that sound because that's how birds express their joy. You know what I mean? Like, birds make noise when they're happy. They also make noise when they're distressed, but this is a happy screech. What are you saying? Good morning. I love you. I love you. <laughs> oh, what did, what did he say? Did you say? It would be hilarious if the birds all of a sudden say, said, what's up Mabuhai squad? How are you doing? Did you sleep well? <laughs> One of the birds is playing with the toy. I love when they play with their toys. Oh my. Sorry guys, all of you with earphones. <laughs> Rest in peace, eardrums. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Hi, Mabuhai squad. I'd laugh if they all of a sudden start speaking Filipino because Ate Elsie also talks to them. Mabuhai squad, like my new fashionable hat. <laughs> and they're grooming me now. Guys, is this Rolf? I think so. Is it? Who are you, Gabriela? Guys, this is Rojo, the male, and he's usually really shy. The fact that he's come to me alone is a big deal. Wow, look at your beautiful feathers, Rojo. I'm glad that you trust me now. Mm-hmm. I know it's Rojo because his breast is still like green and red. Soon, it'll all just be red. Now guys, this is so typical Philippines. Not sure if you can hear that, but someone in our neighborhood is singing karaoke. And it's literally like 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Blasting the karaoke. I love it because I love hearing voices and I love hearing music. So guys, they finally filled in this middle area of our driveway. Ate Jun calls it peanut, but it apparently like grows like a bush, a small bush, and it grows these yellow blossoms. So like little yellow flowers grow from it. And I think it's gonna look really cute. So that's basically what this huge space, this like space was for in the middle of the driveway. And like the cars just roll over it. I guess it's okay. But I think it looks really, really cute. 
I can't wait for it all to grow in and to see some little yellow flowers. Wow, guys, look at the pool. Look at this. So here is the children's area. It will be slightly more shallow, obviously. So that's a, quite a big space for the kids to play in. Yay. So a lot of our friends have kids and they can enjoy. Yay. When we have our parties because here is where the pool bar will be. So the see these stairs the bartender or whoever will be mixing drinks probably me will step down into the pool bar which will not have water but the bar will come up to here so i don't know if any of you guys have ever drank at a swim up bar that's what this is so there will be seats in the water so you could literally sit in and at your chest is the bar and then we could drink and watch our kids play there and then over there where that gentleman is that's kind of the deeper end but we won't have like a deep, deep end. I think the deepest it'll be is four and a half uh, feet. Guys, it's chilly. I'm like cold. Wow, it's like air conditioning. I love this time of the year because it is so cool. Okay guys, whose random chicken is that? Who do you belong to? I think they belong to one of the workers or this, this chicken. Welcome to our farm. <laughs> Guys, I do plan on getting chickens, but keeping them on the side lot. Yes, you're beautiful. Guys, this uh, plant here is called Desert Rose. I initially thought it was Plumeria, but no, it's called Desert Rose. And I love the little flower, it's so cute. Now, those of you abroad might recognize this plant. It's known as Schifflera. It's a very common house plant, a uh, tropical plant but here it can grow outside what i love about living here in the philippines is a lot of the tropical plants that i knew growing up which were only house plants you know in canada couldn't grow outside needed to grow indoors can actually grow outdoors here like naturally because the climate is right it's really really cool now look at this plant here these flowers are often visited by butterflies which i love and I spoke to our landscaper, Ate June. I said, Ate June, can we plant more flowering plants? Because I want the pollinators to come in here. It'll just benefit all of our plants. It'll benefit our fruit trees and stuff. Um, I do plan on getting a bee box. So a box of stingless bees. Because guys, I learned that here in Southeast Asia, we have stingless bees. So basically these like little bees that, you know, can produce honey, etc you can get a box of them where they create their hive and you just station it like somewhere on the property and they'll do their thing they'll make honey and all of this it's really awesome and they don't sting guys i'm having coffee and i'm watching the chicken just kind of strut around the yard picking at the lawn probably eating bugs and worms and stuff i love that there's just a random chicken visiting us or like wandering around that right there is one go-getter chicken. You know? <laughs> it's really taking matters in its own hands, in its own claws. Guys, my parents are awake. They're having coffee. Good morning. It's almost 8 a.m. What is this? Uh, pichi pichi. Mm. This is cassava. Guys, pichi, these are pichi. Filipino like desserts. Wow. Pichi pichi and cassava. It's made of rice? No, I This don't. is made of cassava, which is like a sweet root. Of some kind, I think. Uh, pichi pichi is rice. Uh, this is cassava. So, pichi pichi and this is cassava. Mm. Cassava is like a yam. A yam, yeah. And then this here they, is they make it, make steamed no. saba. Saba. Saba is good. And samada, which is like a sweet bread, also with cheese on it and like butter. And here's some fresh saba. I like it like this. I, I prefer it raw. Guys. My parents' favorite. They're looking for her. Here's Sahara. Sahara, let's go downstairs. Lola and Lolo are looking for you. I. The favorite spa. Sahara jumped on the beanbag. They're watching yesterday's vlog. She likes you to scratch her stomach. Yeah. <laughs> Go, Rizal. <laughs> He's calling Rizal Mission, my late Great Dane, who passed away in 2010. 
of old age because he really reminds us of Mission. Yeah, and, and the color, the way he walks. Rizal, are you Mission reincarnated? I think so. Oh yeah, if he had big jowls, he would have been... Yeah, I miss having Great Danes. So Daddy, do you have the joke of the day? Yes! Okay, what's the joke of the day? Who's there? Elsie. Elsie. Elsie who? Who else? It's me! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> oh my guys. Mom is at it again. This here is ginatang, which is like a coconut based squash. stew. Squash. With squash, and shrimp, and, and string beans. Mmm. <gasps> Yeah, shrimp. Oh, this looks so good. Mm. Oh my gosh, guys. Look, who says Filipino food is not healthy? That is super healthy. Oh my gosh. Let's try it. Got my black rice. Mmm. Oh my god. Mm. The coconut, it's so like lightly sweet and creamy. Mmm. With a blast of squash. <gasps> And those huge shrimps. Mmm. Oh my gosh, this is super good. Five Mabuhay stars. <laughs> Yum. Mmm. I think this is the best thing my mom's cooked so far. My mom's practicing him on the leash. My whole family knows how to handle large hair dogs because of, well, Mission, our Great Dane. He really taught us a lot about how to handle a large-sized dog um, on leash and <laughs> how to deal with the puppy energy. Rizal is still quite young. Like, he's over a year old, but he's still young. He's actually quite good on the leash. <laughs> Because we've been taking him on walks since he was really young, since he was a puppy, and we were living in Sonia's garden. <laughs> He's a little eager right now. Guys, I gave the birds some hazelnut, and they are loving it, totally loving it. And I'm gonna give Clara her hazelnut. Come, come here, Clara. Here, here, Clara. Go ahead, go ahead. You need to come lower, unless you're gonna hang. There you go. <laughs> Gabriella's ready for her next one. Mmm, yummy! And are the conures coming? Come! Ch -ch -ch. Who is this? This is probably Ruby. Hey, Ruby. Here. Want a hazelnut? Come. Ch -ch -ch. Uh oh, hurry before, before Marcelo comes. No! Marcelo's gonna take it. Come on. Here comes Marcelo, quick! Okay, Gabriella just came. Go. I've got two more pieces. Two more pieces. Here. You want? It's a nut. Usually food bribery works, but they're not so hungry. They just had, the crops are probably still full of seeds. Come. Here, here, here. You don't want? You don't want hazelnut? <laughs> Oh man, these these blue napes are going to monopolize the hazelnut pieces. They love it, guys. Here. Quick, take it. Good bird. Hey? Right? Here. No? All right. Finally, she took it. Yummy, right? Sometimes the birds are reluctant to try new foods, and it just takes a little bit of experimentation and uh, you know, a willingness to take a chance to take that first bite, and look, she loves it. I knew she would. Hey, Brittany. Yes, it's Brittany's time out. Yes, Brittany. Hmm. You have to eat your cake. Yes. She has no idea. She's up for like a fun time for five weeks. Yeah, Brittany. Mm-hmm. We're not gonna give up on her, Mabuhay Squad. She's our child. Right, Brittany? Not gonna give up on her just yet. Oh, and she's peeing, okay. 
RJ and I are discussing plans for the pool right now, like how we're going to decorate this whole section. I think we're going to have a glass wall here. Brittany, will you be our outdoor dog? <sighs> She's totally happy romping around the property by herself. I mean, the other dogs are there. There's Rizal. Rizal wishes he could be out here. We can actually let him out. It's time for him to come pee and poop. But she's, this one has an independent spirit. She just needs us to be around at points of the day. You know what I mean? There we go. <laughs> the two dogs are together. Go, Brittany, go. <laughs> They're such good friends. So, Be, I think it's a good idea that we enroll both these dogs in Francis's program, but we're not going to bring them at the same time. Brittany first, and then Rizal after. Guys, Brittany found some roots. Those roots? You sticking to your roots? <laughs> what a funny toy to play with. You know what, my birds would love this. Here, this is your toy, Brittany. No other dog will play with your toy, go. So guys, I never showed you this. So this is the lighting for these steps. They're still gonna beautify this with, I don't know, like either tiles or pebble wash. But I really like the way they've lit the stairs, see? Isn't that cute? And also the V-shaped pillars. The lights there on the side, I think they look really cool. Guys, RJ's asking if he thinks we should put more lights here. On this platform? Mmm, I don't know. We could. I kind of think it looks good the way it is. So guys, we bought um, soft donut collars. Um, for our dogs. We used to have donut collars. I don't know where we put ours, but this is for Cypher. Let's put this one on Cypher. It's cute. Cypher, we have something that you would like. <laughs> He's jumping on it. He's like, give it me. <laughs> okay, here. Let's remove it. Yeah. Here you put it. Okay, guys, we underestimated the size. We're gonna try the bigger one. Okay, size. Wait, wait, wait for daddy. Yes. <laughs> the tag is still there. Good boy. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So cute, Sykes. Cypher. Please <laughs> <laughs> <His> face. <laughs> Poor Sykes. But that's much more comfortable, isn't it? Yeah. There you go, Sykes. You look so cute. We're trying to put one on Sahara, see if it fits her. There you go. It fits perfect. In case we need one. <laughs> oh my god, these dogs look hilarious. Sahara. <laughs> UFO? Yeah, he does look like a UFO. Good morning. It is 6 30 a.m. Early in the morning. I'm about to go for my walk. Slept a little bit late last night. But this is the first night since the incident that I didn't dream about it. Um, both RJ and I have been dreaming about it. I guess this is part of the trauma process. I just, I'm trying to forget the image of what happened so I can move on. Uh, but yeah, last night was the first night I didn't dream about it in the past, what, three days has it been? Which is good. Guys, there, look. Look at those kingfishers. Look at the blue on that bird, guys. Isn't that awesome? Guys, we're taking down the Christmas tree. Oh, uh, our very first Christmas tree. We're gonna use it next year. Oh, wow, guys, look. Good morning. Ate Elsie had such a great idea. This here is Malungai. It's a uh, Moringa. And just like putting a bunch of it on the sticks so that the birds could like pick at it. See, look, Marcelo is loving that Moringa. What a great idea. And it's healthy. That's it, birds. Enjoy the Moringa and not our poor trees. This tree, I think, is slowly being picked apart. Not sure yet, but it does look like it.
guys, look at what my mom did. She made black rice, but what's the, is this banana leaves? Oh, wow. So creative, mommy. So what's it for? Why are, yeah. why to separate? So you can just grab one uh, slice every time you eat. Oh, so Portion. portioned. Oh, thanks, <laughs> mommy. I'm going to Sometimes you put too much rice on No, mommy, I'm, I, I know my portions. Yeah, well, that's enough. I guess she got this from the yard, from our banana trees. Oh, how cool. Mommy, I hope you wash this. Did you wash it? Okay. Cook there? Yeah. Use this one instead of paper or foil. Use banana leaves instead of paper or foil? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, she's saying the, the fragrance from the food will be good if you use banana leaves. We literally just pick them off our tree. I love that we have banana trees here. There are lots of banana trees there. Yeah, and we could totally use the leaves. Now guys, my mom is cooking white rice and I'm gonna turn her white rice blue into blue rice. I learned this from Tita Sonia. The taste is good and it's healthy. Just a few of these butterfly blue pea flowers and watch your rice will be beautifully blue and have antioxidants and stuff it's actually for tea but you could use it for rice or any cooking and i get mine from the good feast ph Brittany, come <laughs> Guys, she doesn't want her birthday cake. <laughs> it's too cold, I think. Like a Chanel. Let me see. Chanel. Wow, Chanel. Awesome. Yeah, guys. She's going to be leaving for boarding school uh, starting Sunday. She just wants to play with her Chanel. Guys, we're trying to fit on her harness because she'll, <laughs> she'll need it. She'll need it for the boarding school with Coach Francis. Guys, going to give these pieces to the other dogs. Um, and man, I was tearing up watching her like, like in her dress and you know, like receiving her cake. I'll tell you why in a sec. But first, let's give this cake to the dogs. Here we go. Here's your cake. Slice of cake. Brittany's cake. Yes, go eat. Mmm. Good boy. Man, he is loving that cake. By the way, we get our dog cakes from Alaga, Manila. Guys, I got food here. Okay. These two never fight. They don't resource guard. Here, you want, or is it too cold? Guys, my dogs are used to warm food. No? <gasps> Oops. We probably should have fed it right when it arrived and not put it in the fridge. You guys usually devour. Guys, Cypher is back to normal. Did you eat cake? They, they didn't want to eat the cake. I think it's because it's cold. cold. Yeah. Later. We'll try to give it to them when it's warm. So yeah, I, realized earlier that, well, one, I felt really guilty, super guilty for like almost giving up on Brittany. I think it's because I was really traumatized. <laughs> like I was just in the, like that moment when I saw that Cypher look like he was dead, I just 
Brittany became not Brittany in my mind. She became like this beast. And like that, that idea stayed in my mind for a good, like two days, two or three days. But like now that I've had some time to process what actually happened. And after that awesome monumentous talk with dog coach Francis, and now knowing that there is still hope for Brittany to stay with us, I feel so much better. Um, but yeah, I, as Brittany was receiving her cake earlier, I felt so guilty. I felt so guilty. So guilty that I almost gave up on her and I'm glad I didn't. Oh, and a lot of you guys commented in our last vlog, like, don't give up on her. And yeah, I agree. I'm glad I didn't. And I'm glad I made that call to co dog, dog coach Francis. So the final consensus then is she is going to go to obedience school for five weeks, which is a long time, guys. Um, and Coach Francis is going to see if he can manage to socialize her with the other dogs there who will kind of teach her not to, you know, be so aggressive with like resource guarding, which is what happened. And uh, also from our side, now we know this was an eye opener. We can't have toys lying around. We already feed the dogs separately. Like Brittany receives her food at her own time in another room. Rizal does too. And these two dogs separately. Um, but we really need to watch now and like advise any guests. Um, and when guests come over, I think what we'll do is Brittany will have a muzzle or she can be put away in the staff house where she, she loves it there already. Um, and for the time being, I do want to separate our small dogs from Brittany. Rizal can be transitionary, like he could play with these dogs here and then play with Brittany as well. So at least Brittany has like a dog companion. And I think this will be the d dynamic from for now, from here on in. Brittany isn't a killer, she's our child and our daughter and fate led her to us and i've realized that the best birthday gift we could give her is this second chance which entails this five week training program with coach francis i think that's the best birthday gift we could give her and inside i'm truly grateful i didn't act on impulse and rehome her right away um, she would have been completely devastated because, I mean, we are her world and she's part of our world too, Mabuhai Squad. So I'm really, really grateful. I kind of waited this out and, uh, you know, gathered more information before making a very big decision, which would have greatly impacted our lives and Brittany's life. Whether Brittany will get to interact with these small dogs again, in particular Cypher, um, not sure yet. Um, I do want to take it slow and see what uh, dog coach Francis says. But this whole thing taught me so much. Life, Lord, universe. I learned such a huge lesson this week. Humongous lesson. So, um, and I hope you guys did too. So, and I know in the comments of last week, you guys wrote a lot saying oh this happened to me and some of you guys did rehome your dogs but others you stuck with them and um, you worked with them dog coach uh, Francis told us not to neuter Brittany because or spay Brittany until after the course I think he said he needs those hormones there otherwise she'll be like an old lady in menopause <laughs> which is the exact words he used um, so during training, she has to be intact. But Rizal, we are going to neuter him um, because apparently neutering and spaying also, you know, kind of calms the dogs down. By the way, guys, these two dogs are neutered and spayed. This is why they're, they, they're not aggressive, really. Good boy. Mmm, yummy cake. Mmm, mmm. Which is a good reason to spay your pets, neuter and spay your pets. I don't know why we waited so long to spay and neuter Rizalzis and Brittany. So, Mabuhai Squad, thank you so much. This vlog has gone on so long now. I've managed to get through it without like crying and breaking down. Um, but 
If you enjoyed this vlog, <laughs> look at Cypher, sorry Cypher, I yelled. If you enjoyed this vlog and enjoyed this kind of happy ending for now, um, be sure to hit the like button as it really helps us a lot. It helps YouTube know that our vlogs are worth sharing to new audiences. And if you haven't yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join our Mabuhai squad. We will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Love you guys so much. And I will see you guys in the next vlog for another adventure here at the Mabuhai Squad farmhouse. Love you guys. Bye. Don't give up on your kids or your pets. Loves. Mm -hmm.